truly what I believe has happened is that we have begun to revolutionize a very old archaic system of education. And it's about time that we bring ourselves out of the dark ages and into something that's absolutely brilliant. And Bob's program is what I like to call education's best kept secret. And I'd like it to not be a secret any longer. It's a process that can be followed, it can be applied, and it can achieve profound results. In a smart skills classroom, the students think. No one can sit back and be a passive participant. In a smart skills classroom, I don't tell you that this is the truth, and I don't tell you that this is a lie, and I don't explain anything about the content. My job is to coach you on thinking not what to think, but how to think. This learning st strategy is something that you can use in your future at work, in your relationships. It's something that you can always implement to what's around you, so it's something that um, everyone can relate to. When I was in high school, I didn't, I didn't want to be in high school, and I couldn't wait to leave. And when I went to the Learning Center and was introduced to Smart Skills, I wanted to learn, I wanted to go back, I wanted to experience things. I had a drive for learning. I think about the steps that it takes to get to a well-articulated answer instead of just getting it out quickly. So when you take the steps like thinking creatively first, brainstorming a list of questions, and then going analytical and researching a bit and gathering your facts, then you can come up with such a more well-informed decision in the end. It's more about self-learning, self-teaching, than actually sitting inside of a classroom and hearing it from a teacher. You're actually teaching yourself how to learn and think and be part of society. I dropped out of school when I was in grade nine and I had one credit and I never thought that I would go back to school, let alone graduate. So um, when, when Smart Skills came out, it made me think a lot about how I thought about things. And you know, it takes um, a pretty strong person to kind of pick away at yourself, you know? So it made me think a lot about how I approach things and maybe change my perspective a little bit of how I approach people. I can have a conversation with him where he doesn't brick wall me and I'm not overwhelming him was like, for me, that was the coolest thing because it, it made my relationship with people so much better. My little brother has a learning disability and um, I can help him, encourage him to go through, you know, the, the different colors and the different ways of thinking so that his problem that seems like this to him becomes like this. And they called this, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant, the thinking wheel. So this is the thinking wheel. This is a full thought, okay? Every thought or every idea or whole thoughtfulness can be divided into three different types of thinking, basically, okay? In a nutshell, anyway, to make it kind of easy. The first type of thinking that a lot of schools like to use because you can exercise a lot of control is analytical thinking. This is where you gather facts. This is where you sort information out. So anyone who asked a question that sought more facts or wanted to put organization to the answers probably prefers that type of thinking. More important than any other aspect of it, it gave me a terminology to be able to describe an exact means of a methodology of thinking. It gave me exact words that I could use to help describe what it was I was trying to communicate. People who prefer to think creatively like to generate ideas. They like to think outside of the box, find aha moments, things connect patterns that normally wouldn't be connected, and they like to do this. They like to provoke conversation and discussion. In my profession, there's so many children who are resistant to learning because they haven't learned how to think about learning French. So I'm excited about applying it to my field. Well, currently I teach at a school where the students are at risk and there's a lot of ADD, ADHD, and uh, 
those students arrive typically at our classroom because they're bored with the usual classroom and they can't sit still. But in our school, um, because it's not I'm standing up at the, te the front teaching and preaching, they're allowed to engage fully with everything with their partners, to, to dialogue, to question, to challenge. Um, it seems to be a style that really helps the, the children with, or the, the students with ADD, ADHD, to engage. And if you write a test in a classroom and you tell me everything you learned and you answer all my questions and you get 100%, what do you get on your test? 100%. What do you get on my tests if that's all you do? 33.3% because that's only one part of learning. Yeah, I just think tonight was a great night. I thought the way Stacey modeled the teaching of thinking skills and helping people learn in brand new ways. It, the way I saw it was it helps them only acquire the skills, but it also builds their personal spirit because of the way in which they learn. And that was so clear to me tonight, that this is a very different way of teaching and learning. And if we can help teachers acquire this set of skills, it'll make a long-term difference of the success of those students. And I think with this, sky's the limit because not only are you giving students an opportunity to think differently and think outside the box, you're giving them an opportunity to take this, run with it, morph it into whatever they need it to be for themselves. The biggest, boldest lesson that we can teach our students, I think, is that there really is no truth but their own truth.